Today I'm going to show you how I make butter in my vintage Jim Dandy butter churn. Anytime I show this bad boy on Instagram, I get so many questions about it. So I thought I would show you how to use it and explain why it may or may not be a good purchase for you. This is a vintage Jim Dandy four quart deluxe junior electric churn. I scored this from a basement of a friend of my grandma's. My grandma texted me one day being like, Marguerite is wondering if any of my grandkids would like an electric butter churn. And I was like, heck yes. Um, and then my mom and stepdad have to, happened to be coming up soon after. Apparently my stepdad had to replace this switch, although I need to, that's coming out, I need to fix that. Um, he replaced this switch. Uh, cause it wasn't working. So my stepdad did fix it. So if you make a lot of butter, first of all, don't buy one of these things just for the sake of buying a cool butter churn. They're not cheap. If you buy a new one, I'll link you a new one. You can find these vintage antique stores, etc. However, if you make a lot of butter and you're not super happy with the process of making it in a blender or a food processor or a KitchenAid and you have some dollars to spend, some Christmas money, some birthday money, a friend of mine just got one for her birthday from her mom, then it might be a really good option. It's way more quiet and hands off. Um, it's not obtrusive like making it in the blender or the food processor. I can make bigger batches. I can do three quarts of cream in this, whereas I could only do about a quart, quart and a half in my Vitamix. In the Vitamix, which I do have a video on how to make that, it was great because I had it. And I didn't have to buy anything extra. I already had the Vitamix. You have to like be on it and watch it though. You can't walk away from it really. Um, Cause otherwise you might accidentally just blend your butter right back into the buttermilk. However, I don't know if I would have bought in a butter churn had I not been given one. Although now that I have used one, when this one dies, I will probably buy a new one because I'm in love with it. I also think that the butter that comes out of it is cleaner and quicker to wash. I got this in summer, so I started doing it with grass milk, um, and now we're into hay milk. Hay milk butter out of this is a lot drier and it can also almost be crumbly um, and I have to like really knead it together and I almost find that um, you can't make the pretty blocks as well but since I weigh butter into four ounce blocks it doesn't really matter what it looks like too much for me. Anyways, let's get making some butter. I scoop cream um, just with a measuring scoop. This is the third of a cup one. Oh, there it is. I've been looking for the half cup one for the last couple minutes. Just saw it. I could not figure out where the kids had put it. Turns out it was me who had put it elsewhere. So this just unscrews. To look at it more closely, this is the butter paddle to it. Um, it did have a rubber gasket, which is now, I don't know where it is. It doesn't seem to have a problem without it though. So This is a gallon jar, but it doesn't fit the same lids, like it's a different size lid. So you couldn't just put that on a different jar. If this broke, I don't know what you would need to do. skim cream is just skim it off the top. I'm not fancy about it and I'll be making my mozzarella recipe on my blog which is the streamlined skim the cream mozzarella recipe. So I don't care if I leave some of the cream in here because it will just become mozzarella. This is actually from 
This jar is from my heifer, who she calved on the 4th and this jar is from the 14th. So it's still a lot more yellow. It's a little colostrum-y. It doesn't taste strong at all though. Here's her jar from the 13th. Like it doesn't smell strong or anything. It just, her cream is still just really bright colored. She, we're calf sharing with her, which is not usually my first choice, but it's working out for now. She only gives us about a gallon a day on top of what she feeds the calf. So to me, it would feel ridiculous to milk all that out just to feed most of it to the calf. And she's got tiny little teats. So yeah, not interested. I'm hoping the calf nursing will um, help lengthen her teats some too. Sweetheart Homestead is the name of our farm. My stepdad um, built me these crates and then my mom painted them. It's just nice to have crates for moving milk around, upstairs, downstairs, moving jars and such. It means I can safely move four jars at a time, crate in each hand, and also for the kids bringing the empty jars back downstairs, super helpful. Also even just um, like after I've strained the milk and put it into jars, moving it from the bathroom where I deal with milk in our basement into fridge just makes it easier. Just highly recommend having wooden crates for moving milk jars in. We have ones that fit half gallon jars too. Um, we don't really use half gallon jars too much these days. It was hard to get enough of them and it's easier to skim cream out of gallon jars. I also have this pint of cream I always sniff it if it's been in the fridge because sometimes it's been in there more days than you remember <laughs> and it's a little strong. If it's just a little strong but it's not bad, you can actually still make butter with it and just label it as baking butter. So I'd say the minimum capacity on this is um, you need to cover the paddle. So you really only need to do it up to about here but you can do three quarts worth. If, so when I first was doing this, I um, would do it with cold cream and you can only do it half full, two quarts, when you use cold cream. However, now I warm the jar up a bit, which I'll show you, and now I can add a whole other quart of cream. The cream lines aren't on these jars aren't great. Normally I only need about three jars worth of milk to fill this thing, but is what it is. I think I may have shooken up the jars a bit when I was bringing them up. And we'll make mozzarella. It will not be wasted. Okay. Now. Put the lid on. Next what I do is I put the whole jar in a pot of hot tap water. Uh, my baby's sleeping so I can leave this hanging down. I don't have to worry about her pulling on it. I'm gonna set a timer for five minutes. Because if you leave this too long, the cream gets too warm. So I find like in the area of five to 10 minutes is your guideline. So start with five and you can always try it with more another time. I'm making feta right now too, which is a work in progress, this recipe. It probably sat more like six or seven minutes because I was busy and couldn't come back just then. Um, I put it on a cloth because sometimes it likes to rattle or vibrate on the counter. Um, the water, we're on limited water here. So even though there was a bit of a cr cream on the side of the jars and that's in the water, 
I put that water in the Berkey anyways it filters it all out and then I'm not wasting water so next all we do here is we plug it in and we turn it on so the cream as you can see I had it about as full as it can go I could have put maybe a tiny bit more in but that's fine and it's really just cream right now it's not thick at all you can see it moving around butter gets stuck in the like whipped cream stage for a while then that's how you know that maybe you should let it soak longer next time um, like let the jar sit in hot water longer next time um, if you your butter is like way too soft and whipped kind of thing then you sat it the jar too long in hot water Every butter, every cream from different cows is going to act differently. It's hard to give an across the board sometimes. Sometimes you have to just pay attention to what your cream is doing and work with that. So with the buttermilk here, I probably have two quarts of buttermilk. We can say, just put it straight in the fridge and use it for baking, but remember it's thin. It's not like the cultured buttermilk you buy in the store. It's thin and would be used like normal milk in baking. Alternatively, you can leave it out for it, if it's with raw milk, it does have the good bacteria present to naturally thicken and clabber itself. It's my, that's my least favorite method because I kind of find that it ends up just tasting real strong. The other option is if you keep kefir going um, kefir grains going milk kefir you can throw that milk kefir grains in your buttermilk and culture it that way to end up with nice thick buttermilk the other thing you can do is if you're making mozzarella I have just I've successfully thrown the buttermilk in a batch of mozzarella so however like if there's two quarts of buttermilk well then I you know add normal milk to make it up and I think when I did it, I did about two or three gallons of skimmed milk and a couple quarts of buttermilk and it worked out totally normal. So maybe that's something you might want to experiment with as well. Since I'm about to make mozzarella, I'll probably throw this in with a mozzarella. Otherwise, sometimes it just goes straight to the pigs, which is good too. Gotta grow bacon. So this is what it looks like at this point. Um, if your hands are really warm, it's going to stick to your hands. So either rinse your hands under cold water or use a wet wooden spoon. Butter doesn't really stick to a wet wooden spoon. So you can do it without just losing all your butter on your spoon. So I give it a squeeze. This butter is pretty soft. I maybe should have um, had the jar in the hot water a little bit less. We're just going to squeeze out as much buttermilk as we can here. You've got two options here. 
we can put this cream, this butter, sorry, in a bowl or a pot of cold water and rinse it in there. Like, so rinse it, dump the water, add new water, rinse it. That's the, which is how I used to do it. Now I just do it right under running water. I get my hands cold and wet first. Then the butter is less likely to stick to my hands. This butter is borderline too soft to work with. If your butter is too soft to work with, um, then throw the butter back in the churn and fill the jar with cold water and let it firm up some. So what we're doing here, is we're just kneading it between the hands to rinse out the buttermilk. I used to think that this method used more water, but now I think that the method where I fill up a bowl with cold water uses more water. I haven't measured it, but this is a little more straightforward for me, and yeah. So this is what I do for now, but I'm not set on anything. So I do a first rinse with each chunk. Then about the time my hand feels like it's gonna freeze off under this cold water. I then do some kneading of it without water to get water and buttermilk out. Now I can't remember which one I did because I just turned the thing. We'll just do them all, yes. probably watching this video going, I know which one you did. I know which one you did. Okay, now one more round under cold water. And your water doesn't need to be blasting, just a gentle flow. So because this butter is so soft, it didn't have a trouble coming together. If this butter was colder, it would have troubles coming together in the nice cohesive block. Like it's, it's sticky from my hands right now, but it's in a nice solid block. So one last quick knead and make sure I'm not doing it over top of the other butter now. And I can feel some of this firming up more now. Now, your next step is you decide how you want to deal with your butter. You can salt your butter at this point at a rate of one teaspoon per pound. So all you do is would flatten it, sprinkle salt over, and then knead the salt in. I'm not salting it. I don't salt butter much these days. I just need to streamline wherever possible. The next thing is you can either measure it, like some people use silicone butter molds or some people do like measuring cups, I weigh it. Zero it out. Okay, and I do in ounces and I do four ounces, which is a stick or a half a cup of butter. And I probably, I usually do like 4.1 ounces, just so I know it's a solid four ounces. <laughs> You can use two wet wooden spoons to shake.
shape them into nice blocks. I have a vintage butter mold that is really neat too. Um, actually, let's see what I'm gonna do here is just tuck these back because I need more plate space for a second. Finish weighing out the butter. Come on, there we go. Oh, not quite. So I'm just shy of this being four ounces. So this one's just gonna go right away into my butter dish. So for these, I have a really neat butter mold, but it's honestly at this point just another thing to wash and another thing to do. I just simply shape the butter into a log. It's nothing pretty or fancy but when you do it in a log, it's easier than to cut, like if you just need a quarter cup of butter. And um, the cream wasn't super high yielding today, only a pound and a half of butter, but oh well, this is why homemade butter is gold, because it is all a lot of effort. It's worth it, but it's why when people jokingly ask about buying it, I'm like, I mean, it's illegal to sell in Canada. But beyond that, there is not a price you could put on homemade butter for me. So, then I throw this into the freezer, and when it's frozen, I throw it in a bag. <laughs> 